Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the City Council meeting in Rancho Mirage. Uh, this is the City Council Library and Observatory Board, Housing Authority, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. Uh, this is Thursday, June 27th. It is 1 o'clock. And we are ready to begin. So if we can have uh, Christy, our city clerk, uh, serve us with the uh, flag salute. Certainly. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you, Christy. And uh, now if you would take roll. Council Member Kite? Here. Council Member Townsend? Here. Council Member Weil? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Hobart? Here. And Mayor Smotrich? Here. Okay. Well, we have uh, some very special presentations today. And the first one is the pet adoption presentation from Loving All Animals. And uh, we're gonna have a special lady come up here. Her name is Tracy, and she's holding a special lady named Marsha. And it's, and, it's, and it's really nice because my middle name is Marsha. Yeah, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Right. So normally I would come down there, but I don't think I need to because we have good pictures of you right on camera. Yeah, he's a little cutie pie. Okay. Well, my name is about... Tracy Habajanik, and I uh, work as the director at Loving All Animals, and we are a foster-based organization that take, uh, we had, well, I was going to say we take them off the kill floor at the shelter, which we do, but we seemingly, the, lately we've had a lot of people uh, relinquishing their animals to us. Having the demographic here of 65 and older, people are passing away or they're getting sick, and so we have a lot of dogs right now. And there's a big plea for fosters to come and help us to take the dogs uh, so we can get them out of the shelters. We work in conjunction with the other foster groups and rescue groups of the Coachella Valley to hopefully make the Coachella Valley a no-kill zone. Uh, so if somebody takes, if we take a dog out of the shelter, for instance, we're actually saving two dogs because one of the, they're freeing up space. And unfortunately, they will euthanize dogs uh, just to free up space, which is crazy. So we need lots of fosters to come and help us with these dogs. And I want to make a special thank you to the city of Rancho Mirage because you have given us a rebate for our adopters. Uh, you're the only city right now, Palm Desert is, is on the heels, but they will only re reimburse uh, dogs that are adopted in Palm Desert. But we you are honoring everybody, and we really super thank you for that. Uh, and I'm a foster failure. That means I fostered, and, and I failed miserably at it because I kept the dog. But I did come to the city and received over a hundred dollar <laughs> rebate, so that was fantastic. And I want to you know it's a good incentive to get people to come and adopt. It is a good incentive. It really is. And can you tell us a little bit more about your foster program? How long does it last? Uh, if, if someone wants to help foster a, a, a little pet, how long do they feel their commitment's going to be? And That's a very good question. Uh, depending on the adoptability of the dog, if it's a white fluffy under 10 pounds that's house trained and is the perfect pet that you can fit in your purse, they last about five minutes. If we have dogs like this little guy, this little girl, uh, that uh, the puppies quickly as well, but we have a lot of dogs that are not highly adoptable and it could be up to Two weeks to three weeks possibly there's a, a Spot on the adoption app or the foster application saying how long are you willing to foster and my favorite answer is as long as it takes to get the dog adopted uh, And we've actually had one dog in for four months But there's a dog for everybody there certainly is there really is I mean these crazy dogs with one eye and three legs and People love it, yeah. some people. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know, I'd like to mention Dana Hobart because yes. he's really the one that started this whole program with uh, adopting uh, pets and uh, the city helping out financially. So oh. why don't you take it from here? Well, I remember we used to introduce the dog or cat, but almost always a dog, uh, to the audience. I'd be down there and we'd be holding the, the animal up and uh, <clears throat> Uh, one of my favorite lines that uh, somewhere along the line uh, <clears throat> I came up with was uh, to encourage people like all of those who are watching at home this, pro this very program uh, <clears throat> to uh, encourage them that if they're not getting enough love in their lives 
the easiest way to increase that component is to adopt one of your dogs. Here, here. Uh, I'd also say um, uh, the, I, the thing I like about loving all animals, similar to others, but one of the things is you guys are pretty aggressive. <laughs> and uh, yes. <laughs> the example I cite for that, uh, my wife and I have had two uh, dogs that we had rescued. And uh, <clears throat> one of the members of your organization, whose name will go uh, not into mm -hmm. the annals, <laughs> uh, came by the house one day and uh, held up uh, a little white shaggy puppy uh, and said, uh, would you um, uh, do us a favor and take care of this dog for two weeks? I'll be back from wherever she was going. And uh, so uh, we thought, well, we already had two, but <laughs> yeah. okay, we'll do it. So we took the third, the third dog. The first day, the dog got to know our other two dogs, had a good time, uh, introduced uh, her to the swimming pool, a big yard fenced, and uh, the three of them got along famously. So the next day then, we decided to take her to get groomed to uh, allow uh, her to shine and we help find a, a home for her. And uh, as I was backing out, Vicky was holding the, uh, the dog in her arms, and as soon as the rear wheels touched the street, the dog began just shaking like a leaf, oh. just horribly, uncontrolled shaking, and all of a sudden passed out. And uh, so instead of driving to the groomers, we drove to the vet. And uh, he looked at her, said that it was a condition that occurs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but <clears throat> uh, then we got home, and two weeks later, Nobody from Loving All Animals came by to pick her up. Oh. And three weeks later, and four weeks later, it was the same. And we finally figured out what, what the problem was. She had never had a second seizure. And I came to the conclusion, because I'm a pretty smart guy, you know, and <laughs> I can add together up these numbers. And she never had another seizure, which told me that after a day of playing with our other two dogs and playing in the yard and all of that, she figured this was her place, and I think she faked the seizure. <laughs> <laughs> because she knew we, we'd never find a home for the dog that had uh, seizures. Uh. And <clears throat> that was about six or eight years ago, and she hadn't had a seizure since, so I know that she was just acting it out. <laughs> Anyway, you guys do a tremendous job, Thank you. Thank and you. I hope that uh, I hope that our residents, who do need a little love in their lives, will give you a call. Well, that's really good for health reasons as well. It lowers your blood pressure, gets you off the couch, gets you outside, walk the dog. It's great for a bunch of things. And thank you so much for having us. We were, as I mentioned, we were foster based. We still are foster based, but we were just gifted a shelter, and that shelter is on 51st and Jackson between Calhoun and. Jackson on 51st, uh, as we are allowed to have up to 10 dogs and as many puppies under the age of four months that we can handle, and up to nine cats. So hopefully we'll get our customers that were previously in Palm Desert get out there and adopt a dog. And what's your phone number again? It's 760-834-7000. Say it again. 834-7000. 760. You bet. And who is, this, who is this one you have with you? This is, well, this, uh, funny you should ask. This little darling was found in a box of puppies at the side of the road, which we see a lot of uh, in 120 degree heat. Uh, the mummy, we're not sure where she was, but somebody basically dumped them. They came to the shelter and they called them uh, after the Brady Bunch. Marsha, Greg, Bar you know, oh. all the rest of it. So this is Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> and Marcia we've got a lot of these guys at the shelter right now. We've got and Marcia's five weeks old. She does, and she had coccidia and giardia, unfortunately, and so did the other puppies. We lost two of them, unfortunately. Oh. But they are rebounding, as you can see, and will be available for adoption in about three weeks. It's very exciting. Yeah. Okay. Well, we certainly appreciate your Thank coming. Thank you. Appreciate and, it. Uh, and you, you're, you're, 
She looks very natural in your arms. Well, she's just a little love bug. She's not squirming, thank the Lord. Yes. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you okay, so much. You. And just as a, an additional reminder, that's okay. Uh, Rancho Mirage uh, participates in an animal adoption and pet care incentive program and provides Rancho Mirage residents a re reimbursement for pet adoption fees of up to $100 and an additional $200 reimbursement uh, for um, pet care services. So if you need information about this program or about anything else or where you can get one of these lovely uh, animals, uh, please contact our website. It's on the city website or you can call or visit City Hall. Our telephone number here is 760-324-4511. So, uh, if you need a little love in your house or in your heart, that's the way to do it. Thank you again, Tracy. Okay, so moving on now to uh, another presentation. And this is something that I'm going to hand over to uh, Isaiah, uh, our city manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. All right, the uh, fun part of the job. Uh, today we get to uh, recognize uh, two of our longer term employees. Uh, they are moving into the next phases of their life, retirement after a long and productive career for the city of Ranch Mirage. So the uh, first employee that we're going to recognize is Dave Martin. So Dave, come on down. I'm gonna make you stand up front while we talk about you. So uh, Dave has been a city employee for 29 years, and uh, he's in our public works department. He is currently uh, the manager in that department, so he oversees the three divisions that are within public works. Uh, and after 29 years within the department, Dave has done everything and seen everything. So our city was very different 29 years ago, uh, and Dave has been uh, an important part of the development of our community. and. One of the uh, uh, first impressions you get when you come into Ranch Mirage is how beautiful it is. Uh, our streets, our parks, our medians, they're all well maintained and that's because of the hard work of uh, people like Dave and our public works department. And uh, even when it gets 120 outside, they're out there on the street taking care of things. After we have big wind events, they're out there taking the sand off the roadways so that it doesn't turn into PM10. Uh, so Dave has been just a fantastic employee. Uh, when you think of, uh, when I think of uh, a great employee, it's employees like Dave Martin that come to mind. His dedication, his sacrifice uh, that he provided the, to this community, uh, you can see the impacts of that every day. So Dave, uh, on behalf of me and the entire staff, we just wanna thank you for your dedication to the city of Ranch Mirage. You will be missed, uh, but we are happy uh, that you are moving into retirement and you get to enjoy your family a little bit more. And uh, you've been putting the city first for 29 years and now it's time for you to be able to put your family first again. So thank you for all your hard work and everything you've done for the city of Rancho Mirage. Thank you. I wanna add my thanks too. If you don't mind, I'd like to give you the microphone and maybe you'd like to say a few words. This is the scary part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a public speaker, so I'll keep it short so I don't embarrass myself or anybody in this room. But Mayor, City Council, thank you. It's been a great 29 years. City Manager, Isaiah, Jesse, thank you. If it wasn't for all those people out there, I wouldn't have been a success or succeeded the way that I did. So thank you, all of you. And if I can have the city council members come down for a photo. Come on down. Uh, Richard, Ted, everybody. Um, you've really been quite a, 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 a fixture here for so long. We're so proud and we're so sorry to, that we're losing you, but we know you're going on to a, a new adventure and a new chapter in your life. 
and uh, we're thrilled for you. So um, you're very special, and we've all worked very closely with you. Thank you. There's also a plaque there for him you want to present. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, why don't we just... Two million. <laughs> As you can see, there's a lot of affection here. There's a lot of attachment. So why don't we slide over just a little bit, and Marcus is going to take a picture. There's a lovely plaque here. Congratulations on your retirement. Presented to Dave Martin in sincere appreciation for your dedicated years of service with the city of Rancho Mirage. We hope that you enjoy your well-deserved retirement, 1990 to 19, 2019. Wow, it's quite an accomplishment. Okay, everyone huddle in. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Okay, I'll tell you, send it back to Isaiah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this uh, next employee is very familiar uh, with the city council. He's uh, given more presentations to the city council than I have, uh, and that's Bud Cop. So, Bud, why don't you come on down? So Bud is our uh, planning manager, and uh, he's been uh, with the city since 2007. And uh, one of the great things about planning, and uh, we were just talking about um, how beautiful Rancher Mirage is and what it takes to uh, maintain that, uh, a key component of making sure that our city develops in the way that we want it to is the planning department. Uh, Bud has been a vital part of our planning department since his arrival in 2007. Uh, we stole him from a neighboring government and it was definitely to our benefit. Um, and one of the great things about planning is you get to see the physical results of the projects that you work on. And so when planning takes a project, it's on paper. And they really have to think about the potential impacts of that project and what that will do to the community. It takes somebody uh, with unique vision uh, to be able to anticipate potential issues of a project. And uh, some of the key projects that Bud has worked on uh, throughout his career have been uh, the Palm Valley School Master Plan, the Sunnylands Visitor Center, uh, multiple projects at Eisenhower Medical Center, uh, one of the most highly utilized parks in our uh, city, the Ranch Mirage Dog Park. Uh, he was vital in the uh, development of the Dell Webb project. And uh, just to speak to Bud's character, um, we tasked him with a very big project uh, right before uh, he's leaving us. And that was with the uh, Section 31 and the uh, review of a thousand page environmental impact report. And uh, as the council is well aware of, if we ever had a key project going through the process, we wanted Bud on it. Uh, just because of his thoughtful nature and his track record of being able to spot things that maybe most people would miss. And his comments and input during the process definitely led to a better result every time. And Bud uh, takes a special person with a special skill set to be able to do that. And I wanted to thank you for your hard work all the way through your last day. Uh, that was a, a big project that we just handed it to you. And uh, Bud's comment to me when we talked to him about this project, it would have been you know, very easy for somebody to hit cruise control and not take on such a tedious project right before they leave. But uh, when we were talking to Bud about it, uh, he said, I, I love the city and I'm gonna do everything I can to get this project done before I leave. And uh, Bud, thank you for that. And that's the attitude you've had your entire career. Uh, you've put the city first, and we are much better off because of you. Uh, so thank you for everything you've done for the city of Rancho Mirage. My personal thanks also 
In fact, why don't we walk right over here, and I will give you your plaque. And we're thrilled to have to be able to present it to you. Congratulations on your retirement presented to Bud Cop in sincere appreciation for your dedicated years of service with the city of Rancho Mirage. We hope that you enjoy your retirement, which is well-deserved, 2007 to 2019. And I would love for you to say a few words, but um, if you've ever gone into Bud's office, and he has worked so closely with so many of us for so many years, it's such a treat having him describe all these fine details that he has managed to pick up and little, little idiosyncrasies that most people wouldn't notice, but he has. And uh, he explains everything to the detail so beautifully. And um, we're so glad that um, we've had you for all these years and we're, we wish you all the best and maybe you'll say a few words. Thank you. <laughs> Clumsiness was not part of the reason he's leaving. It's, it, ha it has been an honor and a privilege to serve the city for the past 12 and a half years. I would like to start out by providing you with a summary of my comments on the EIR. Um, <laughs> But in all seriousness, while having dinner with a friend of mine earlier this week, she asked me how I feel. And after some thought, I responded, I already feel a sense of loss. I'll miss working with staff, the commission, the city council, the fine residents and businesses in the city. I'll miss feeling an integral part of the city that advocates the integrity of planning attention to detail, and never wavers from the expectation of superior results. Although I'm sad to not be a part of such exciting projects on the city's horizon, your planning team is compassionate, passionate about the excellence of planning and has love for the city unlike any other. Knowing that I've been a small part of the history of Rancho Mirage makes me smile. Retiring allows me to reinvent myself, to pursue adventures that I've postponed, and become more involved in issues that I care deeply about. I'll no longer have to act my age, and I've put off being young long enough. <laughs> Who knows, the next time you see me, I'll be again here at this podium given my three minutes, but being retired, I'll have ample time to take a course in speed talking. So, again, thank you for the privilege and honor to serve such a great city, and I will miss you all. Thank you. Have the council members come down again for a photo. And, and as you can see, Bud has an amazing uh, sense of humor. He also is quite the dresser. In fact, I always get a kick out of it when he wears his Jerry Garcia ties. So we will miss those and uh, hope that you have an opportunity to wear them other places. And when you come back to visit us, you'll wear them. So. Thank you. He had the baseball hat. Oh, yeah. yeah. All the baseball Always. hats in his office. Yep. As you can see, we take these departures of uh, our valued staff members very seriously, and uh, it does tug at our hearts. So thank you. Shows the uh, dedication and love that our staff has for this city and ensuring the uh, quality of life within uh, their work product and always being mindful of our residents. So. Thank you to uh, Bud and Dave. Okay, 
Well, now we're gonna move on to the non-agenda public comments. And this is an opportunity for the public to speak on issues that are not on the agenda for a maximum of three minutes per speaker. And we have a couple of speakers here. And first in line is Katie Stice. She is our new executive, new executive director from our uh, Chamber of Commerce. She's been there for a while and uh, we just value everything she does. She's a real gem, so welcome. Thank you so much, thank you. Madam Mayor, Council Members, City Staff, and the guests that are here today, it's my pleasure to take the time to thank Council for their continued Chamber of Commerce support. With a renewed contract, we're able to serve and provide a stronger business community. The Chamber has a rare momentum and trust within the community, and it's not taken for granted. The bottom line is that we are laser focused on positive economic impact. Also a very special thank you uh, for the title sponsorship for Taste of Summer Rancho Mirage. Here is an event update by the numbers. Hope you're ready. We're 14 days away from the world famous kickoff mixer at Perch, that's on July 11th. There are over 200 attendees already RSVP'd and we expect about 600. Taste of Summer Rancho Mirage has expanded to become a five-week-long food fest this year from July 12th through August 18th, and this includes six delicious weekends or 38 tasty days. We have a record 28 participating eateries, and we have not stopped. We believe that we can reach 30, and they have a total of 80 specials or $4 deals this summer. We have 13 participating charities that are fundraising, outselling wristbands. So far, they have about 1,000 wristbands out in the community. So that's about $10,000 to our local charities. Um, we also have over 20 event sponsors and media partners that are helping to make this all happen. So thank you very much to the city of Rancho Mirage for making big things happen for small businesses. And the last number is we hope that this is one hungry community this summer. Visit us at tasteofsummerranchomirage.com and please participate. Thank you. And thank you, Katie. You're welcome. Anyone from the council want to make a comment or ask Katie anything? Yes, I do. I've never seen such a wonderful smile representing our chamber. You look so <laughs> good. You did a great job. Thank you so Thank much. You. We'll see you soon. Thank you. I think we all feel that way about Katie. All right, the next in line is Alan Worthy. <laughs> good afternoon. We're going to have some good news today, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready for that. So first of all, I want to thank you, City, Mr. Attorney, and all of you. Congratulations, I'm trying to say, about closing or, you know, this lawsuit you've had over the land here. Uh, congratulations. I know that was a lot of work, and it's important and bodes well for the city, because when you've gotten bad reviews in public, I have defended you on that subject. Um, well, so what I have to say uh, also is, you know, I was in Atlanta, it was where everything went awry with the lawsuit, but whatever. Uh, uh, my mother passed away shortly. I'm so sorry. After I got back. But I tell all of you this because, you know, we lived here for years and we had a ball. And she had a ball. There was hardly a Friday night that we were not at the club. And uh, many, many other nights were spent playing canasta. <laughs> and, you know, if you want to hear me yell, that was the time. Uh, she had a knack for choosing more than one card and reviewing them before they, <laughs> she would put the other one back. And I would sit there and I'd say, Mama, put the card back in the middle of the pile. And, you know, my brother would be sitting there saying, Alan, let her have it. And I was like, no, she knows how to play. And we'd start screaming, laughing. I mean, this is the way that game had gone since the time I was a child. So we had a ball here. Um, I had lunch with her, you know, about every day while I was in Atlanta. And I, one day I made a point of saying to her, uh, I want you to know that I think the Opera Guild is going to give me an appointment to present my, you know, newest musical that she, of course, knew about. And in fact, a week ago today, uh, I spoke to them and they've given me the appointment to present this show to them on July the 18th. And it's for opportunity, you know, the kids group. So I'm thrilled about that. That's come to pass. And the other thing, uh, 
I said to her was, I'm going to get my condo back, as I said to all of you one day here. Uh, and of course she knew that because we know what we're talking about. We were born and raised in real estate. Um, this is the girth, if you will, if that's the right word, of the fraud and embezzlement that started at Eisenhower. And today, I'm just lighting the candle or maybe I'll have a drink, I don't know, <laughs> that is going round robin over the phone today, I believe, from the DA. I've had to go all the way to the county supervisor's office because of the fraud on the BIA. Uh, you'll all remember, I think, at the first of the year, you know, I said we've all got to stick together. This is out of the bottle with this scourge of the desert. And who could have believed what a horrible year that we would have had with these murders? And, you know, we cannot help every single thing, but the things we can help should be helped. And to the deputies in the back, I've got three people I need you to pick up today and question, if not arrest. Apathy has no place in law enforcement, and we've got an apathy problem here in the desert. One more little thing, this guy that worked for me here in the desert, who has friends and family here, he's in San Diego, he said, I can't comprehend it. No one can comprehend it, except the people who live here, and it's become all too common. And the apathy, like we just expect to be assaulted and even murdered. It's not okay that this has gotten out of the bottle, the genie out of the bottle, that our great desert is now known for this. Ms. Mayor and Council, I know you will agree. We need to hold law enforcement responsible. Had you bothered to pick up the first three, then it would never have devolved into this three, and I would never have lost my home. I'm demanding that you pick them up today, the last three, and question them about it. You need to fill the gap and not dump it all on the DA's office and the county supervisor. This has to stop. Who would have imagined we'd have Mr. 18 Worthy, murders? please wrap up your comments. Yeah, thank you, city manager. We have to disclose it in real estate, sir. It's a disclosure. Murders. Who would have believed it, sir? Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. And now we'll move on to Sarah Glover. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak my piece. So I'm Sarah, and we have. Can you pull the microphone a little closer? Oh, sorry. Thank you. My name is Sarah, and we have lived here in uh, Magnesia Cove for the last six years, and I'm here to speak of my neighbors installation of the solar panels, which happened May 9th. Can everyone hear me? Mm -hmm. Great. So May 9th, 2019, I have images to speak on what I'm talking about. And so on Bisqua Road, we have solar panels that were installed and in standing about three feet in height. You can nail underneath them and wires are hanging and they're an extreme angle, which is very disruptive to us as neighbors. Uh, we have three glass panel sliders in our living room, and that's all we see are these solar panels. So from our bedroom, it's the same scene. Our current views come across like the top of a food truck, a food truck parking lot. That's what it looks like from our living room. Neighbors have come over to express their concern and offered to uh, offer their support. And I'm here to just mention to the, to the city of Rancho Mirage that has been so beautifully orchestrated as um, a beautiful city to live in, except for if we don't take control of these installations, I think it's unfair for owners, homeowners, and something has to be addressed. Um, I have reached out to the city, uh, several employees, code compliance, Jack Merchill. We have been sharing images. Um, I was told that some adjustments were made, but it's not adequate. And it's a distraction. And it's completely unfair to a neighbor that's been there for six years. And these are new neighbors that have not moved in yet 
and they're changing the aesthetic of our community. And I'm here to speak on that. And I feel that something needs to be addressed because we can't just close our curtains and all those glass sliders that gave us the mountain views that we have lost over this past almost two months. So here I am just speaking on that point. Thank you. Thank you for speaking. Madam Mayor. Uh, yes. Um, I'd like to ask uh, if uh, Isaiah wouldn't uh, get us detailed information about what she's talking about and uh, let us meet and discuss the issue. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jeremy Glime, our Development Services Director, if you could hand him that material. Um, the uh, Solar Rights Act that the state implemented took away a lot of our local control, but there still are um, some things that we can enforce when it comes to solar installations. Um, so we will prepare a report and I will distribute that to the council uh, as an update and any corrective action that staff is gonna do. Thank you. And we will also uh, keep you informed as well. Well, and just as a follow up to that, we have been working with that neighbor and they did make adjustments when we first went out to do the inspection. And essentially what happened was that neighbor lowered every single panel that they put up initially. Um, mm -hmm. So they were at a higher angle. We asked them to lower them and they did lower all the panels um, at our request, which is something that they didn't have to do. So they have been cognizant of our requests and have been working with the city. Okay. We should be brought up to date on where that is at the moment. Sure. <clears throat> and what made it so disturbing, so before the, uh, the company left installing these panels, we invited that neighbor that we had over our home for dinner uh, to come and see this display from our windows, from our living room. Uh, he was not happy with what he looked at, but he has stopped speaking to us ever since. So he's showing a lot of defiance and it doesn't feel good. Okay, well thank you very much for your comments and we will check into this and get back to you. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the next person on the list is Hobart Ware. Thank you. My name is Hobart We Hire, and I'm here to give you some cheer. Could you uh, could you speak into the microphone so we can speak hear the mic right here? This one. Yes. Okay. Anyway, I am here to convince this council to invite President Donald Trump to Rancho Mirage. Uh, the Republican Party hasn't been, doesn't want to go to California right now because they think it's not worth it. But they don't realize that there's golden nuggets in this state, and Rancho Mirage is probably one of the biggest, shiniest nuggets to come to. And it's been a city pretty much named the playground for presidents. Now, I've been inviting him already, and almost everything he asked me for my advice quite a bit. And so I'm telling him, come to California and make it a, a golden state again. And so I appreciate it if you would take that into consideration. And because I am a Marine and I played in the Marine Corps band for four years, I will see what I can do if we get him here to have a Marine Corps band and meet him at the airport. And so anyway, you can go from there. And thank you so much for listening to me. Well, thank you so much for your comments. Okay, thank you. Okay. The next speaker will be Chuck Parker. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm really happy to be back. I want to start. Name. Oh, Chuck Parker. I live in, my address is a P.O. Box in Palm Desert. I live in Bermuda Dunes. And uh, we were here last on April 9th for the study session that you hosted on the Salton Sea. And we're very grateful for that opportunity. Um, I look at it as uh, one of the main uh, highlights in our efforts to get the, all of the cities to pass resolutions in favor of including water import from either the Sea of Cortez or the Pacific Ocean to the Salton Sea. And since we were here, uh, on April 9th, we had resolutions from Desert Hot Springs and Palm Desert. Since then, uh, the cities of La Quinta, 
uh, Indio and Palm Springs have also passed resolutions. And I've left a, a folder with Christy, she's gonna give them to you after the meeting, with copies of those resolutions, except for La Quinta, which they sent it to me in a format that I couldn't figure out how to print, but it's the same. Three of them, La Quinta, Palm Desert, and Desert Hot Springs were amendments to the MOU between Riverside and Imperial Counties. The last two, uh, Indio and Palm Springs, are resolutions which stand alone and are not connected to the MOU. Uh, as you know, Supervisor Perez's office had an objection to amending the MOU, so we figured let's just offer the resolution uh, to councils who want to pass it uh, so they won't have to amend the MOU, because a lot of council people were saying uh, we support the idea of water import, but we don't want to uh, interfere with the MOU and the wishes of the supervisor. And the last uh, version of the resolution from Palm Springs, we understand from uh, Councilman Jeff Kors in Palm Springs, the, the wording there was actually approved by Supervisor Perez. He took out, all he did was he took out the word ocean. So it doesn't say ocean water import, it just says water import. So, I mean, that's fine with us. So um, the other thing is, um, in addition to the two projects that were presented here to import water by GEI and by National, uh, there's another project which uh, says that it can bring in water much cheaper, $600 million to bring in water by a canal from the Sea of Cortez. This is by, it's called the Sea to Sea Group, and, I, and when I get a copy of their proposal, I'll email it to you if you'd like to look at it. It's, it's kind of interesting because it is cheaper and it can be done more quickly. So I wanna thank you all so much. I get a good, uh, such a good feeling coming here. I worked for the post office 28 years and, and I wish I'd have worked here. I mean, they never, <laughs> they never did anything like that for me, but uh, it's been a pleasure, thank you. And we, I'm here to ask you to please put a motion on the agenda to pass a resolution in support of water import as part of the long-term solution for the Salton Sea. Thank you. Before you leave. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you in connection with the supervisor's uh, modification, uh, did the supervisor give any reason, uh, one, did he give any reason for eliminating uh, the word salt so that when we say importing water, we, we would know we were talking about seawater, Sea of Cortez or Pacific Ocean. Right. And he took that word out, salt, left in water. Uh, did he explain why that was a significant matter to him? I don't know. I, uh, we, he hasn't offered us any explanation, and uh, Councilman Kors didn't offer any explanation. So it's, it's a little bit of a mystery to me because I don't see how it really alters the equation because I don't see where else they could import water from besides the ocean or, or the Sea of Cortez. So that remains to be seen. We haven't, uh, we don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But you can, when, later if you look at those, you'll see that the wording is very, it's a very slight alteration in the wording. Well, it's slight, but what I, I mean, I anybody that make reads it knows there's only one area to import from that we're not already getting water from. Certainly right. not gonna be from the Colorado River. Right. Uh, so what, what other source of water is there and what is the objective to be gained by leaving the word salt out? Well, I, I, will, I will contact the supervisor's office and get an answer for you, because that's a very good question. It's been bothering me, but I just didn't uh, follow up on it. I didn't actually want to disturb the hornet's nest uh, very much. But I think we need an answer to that question, and I, I will do my best to get, to get you an answer to that. Thank you. Because uh, there, there was some discussion at a meeting that the State Water Board held in North Shore about a month ago where Phil Rosentrader, who was here also from the Salton Sea Authority, was speaking on behalf of the long-term committee of the 10-year plan, and he was saying they were looking at uh, cleaning up water going into the Salton Sea as one way to get better water. That would be the New River, mostly, and the, and the Alamo River, and also others, he said, other sources of water, which I don't know what that would be unless they want to pump water out of the aquifer, which that doesn't sound like a good idea to me either. But I will contact both him and Supervisor Perez's office and get an answer. Thank you. Can you let me know? Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parker. All right, the next person uh, to be called upon is Laura Ramsey. <clears throat> Hello, 
Hi, Madam Mayor and Hello. Council people. My name is Laura Ramsey and I reside at Trilogy Polo Club in Indio, California. On May 23rd this year, the Salton Sea Coalition presented their resolution to a gathering at the Trilogy Polo Club in Indio. Over 80 people from Trilogy Polo Club, Shadow Hills Country Club, Trilogy Club La Quinta, and Indio attended. We also invited the Torres Martinez Desert Cahuilla Indians to join us for their valuable input on the Salton Sea crisis. Virtually all of the feedback from the many attendees was positive in regards to the proposals of the Salton Sea Coalition. This was true across the political spectrum. Many of our residents are concerned with the immediate health issues the Salton Sea crisis is presenting and want to find a solution before the situation worsens. I volunteer at Roosevelt Elementary School in Indio, and I've observed possible health issues with the children from poor air quality illnesses such as asthma, type conditions to spontaneous bloody noses. Many residents in our area feel the Salton Sea should be restored to its thriving state for health reasons, air quality benefits, and to keep the valley a positive place for clean air, recreation, tourism, and wildlife sanctuary. Many residents are new to the valley and feel this is their new home and believe restoring the Salton Sea to a top priority as an issue. As Indio and Coachella grow in population, this issue is high on the list for immediate attention. We believe it is a bipartisan issue for our community as we all breathe the same air. This holds true for permanent residents as well as part-time residents who have considerable investments in the area as well. Along with lifetime residents of the Valley who have worked tirelessly for the restoration of the Salton Sea and who remember a thriving Salton Sea, our hope is to work together as a community to restore the Salton Sea for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you so much. And our next speaker will be Robert Mueller. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. My name is Robert Mueller. I'm a resident of Rancho Mirage. Uh, as Mr. Parker mentioned, um, we were here, uh, the organization that I'm helping actually was here uh, in April asking for consideration of, a, of an addendum to the seawater, uh, seawater import addendum to the MOU. And um, fortunately, uh, in response, the city kindly uh, organized a study session and the study session actually became a watershed uh, for this organization. And uh, uh, it, the amount of information that was available was tremendous. And as you probably know, there were representatives from other cities that uh, attended that. And as a result, uh, the way became clear for a number of additional cities uh, to either approve the addendum or, uh, or a resolution uh, that they independently authored. Um, moreover, it, uh, the uh, study session opened the doors to uh, dialogue now with some local Indian tribes and uh, also uh, there's an outreach to uh, Imperial County. So the next steps for this group uh, are a series of public forums in the Valley. Uh, we're working with some organizations now where there's a lot of interest in, in garnering uh, uh, presentations uh, at, at uh, individual clubs. And so I think you'll see the, uh, the topic rise uh, greatly in terms of visibility. Um, there are only four cities remaining in the Valley uh, that are yet to uh, uh, consider or vote on, I should say, uh, the, uh, the addendum or uh, a uh, resolution. Rancho Mirage is one of them. Um, so we'd like to ask you, as Mr. Parker asked, uh, we'd like you to uh, kindly consider putting uh, either the uh, addendum or a resolution on the City Council agenda. Also, uh, as part of the uh, public outreach, um, there'll be a series of public forums, and I'm not sure what the process is, but we'd also like the city to consider uh, a, um, a forum at the Rancho Mirage Library. This is not something that would be exclusive for this group. I think it would be very helpful to have uh, uh, groups of various viewpoints regarding uh, the Salt and Sea. But, it's obvious that uh, solutions to the Salton Sea are more than 10 years away and uh, the Salton Sea's condition is already quite dire. 
in 10 years, it'll be quite severe. So I think the time is now. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for your comments. And the next speaker will be Pat Leach. Hello, I've been here before. I'm Pat Leach and I live in Rancho Mirage. And I was at the study session and I was really proud that Rancho Mirage um, was the cornerstone in, in getting more information out. And I think a lot of the cities voted for this because of what happened here. Um, I, I do want this to be on our agenda as soon as possible. Um, I attended Amdocs uh, this uh, March and there was a film made by somebody from Massachusetts. And basically the um, film, and there were uh, high school students at this film, they were included. And the basis of this film is that we don't have the will to correct the problems at the Salton Sea, that it's going to go away and the dirt's going to kill us, and, and which we all know. I think uh, Ms. Mr. Hobart pointed that out at the study session about the dangers of what's going on with the Salton Sea. And I did stand up at that movie and I said, yes, we do have the will and there are people working really hard to um, bring the Salton Sea back. So please put it on the ballot and maintain your leadership in the ballot. Thank you for your comments. The next to speak is Brad Anderson. Thank you, Brad Anderson, Ranch Mirage. I wanted to uh, take a little bit of your time and talk about the Mosquito Vector Control District again today. Uh, I'm sure you're well aware that uh, the West Nile virus has been detected most everywhere in this valley. And, uh, and you have uh, St. Louis encephalitis that uh, you have two positives down in the Thermo area now. And that's, well, anyway, that's worse. Uh, but uh, I wanted to emphasize that I know that the Vector Control District is not performing all the duties they need to do to curb this, this explosion or uh, epidemic or close to epidemic but see, uh, conditions that, uh, of this West Nile virus, and and it all it is is mosquito counts, and all we have to do is keep the mosquito counts down, and uh, that's a doable thing, if they're doing it with all the people they have. I think, I believe that they don't have a first staff; they're working understaffed, and and I know this is the only place in the country right now that is so so extreme, and we're in the middle of the desert. It's it's it's. It's unbelievable, really, I, I would imagine, for any other buddy outside of this area to see this. And they need to ask for assistance from other vector control agencies from the state of California, from uh, even uh, California Department of Food and Agriculture, USDA, anybody that can do this. Uh, because I've done it in the past. I used to work for the state, and I worked on an invasive species and I know what I'm talking about. And, and they can't do it alone. It's apparently they're not performing the duties as they should, like I stated before. And these area applications of pesticides, uh, that's a short-term solution, but also it's, it's probably not gonna work uh, to, the, to the extent that they want it to. And you gotta remember when, when they're using area type pesticide applications, that's a last ditch effort. Uh, they, this is an aquatic insect. Uh, they can kill it in the water stage or in the uh, larva stage in the water, and and when you're spraying pesticides through the air, you're killing everything. That's uh, you know, and and that's you know that's counterproductive to what you want to do. Uh, so I just I know the vector control district. I know I know the shorthand hand it, and they're not. I blame mainly the administrative staff, but. Uh, you, I, yeah, I, I, three minutes is not enough to talk about this, but uh, I just know they're not doing what they need to do. Uh, they need outside assistance, somebody to come in, public health to come in and assist them, manage them, uh, because we're going through the same thing we did about 10 years ago. And uh, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, the next person to speak is Wally Melendez.
Uh, good afternoon, City Council. I'm uh, Wally um, Melendez, uh, staff, and we, the people, thank you for this opportunity to uh, use up my three minutes. <clears throat> and I want to dwell on a, a word, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> home. Homegrown, homegrown. And the reason I want to latch to that word, homegrown, is because I've been uh, talking about a subject every time I come here. And <clears throat> I make all the meetings of Rancho Mirage, Palm Desert, and the, of the uh, college uh, district uh, trustees meeting, which meet once a month, and I'm just latching on to one subject, and that is <clears throat> education, of course. And uh, to that point, uh, what I mean by that, and everybody knows this, I've been here many times, is uh, I'm talking specifically about our homegrown college, which is the College of the Desert. And the reason that I keep pointing that out is because we in the Coachella Valley live in a desert. And the name of the college is College of the Desert, which to me uh, points out that, that, that our College of the Desert, and I have one minute left, is our homegrown college. And being this, the Coachella Valley is a very unique place because not everybody can survive the, the desert. It's a harsh place. The first summer I had here, I had problems. So I learned a few tricks how to, how to survive in the desert. Plenty of water, one thing. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yes, I make all the meetings. Uh, Rancho Mirage, uh, Palm Desert, and the college uh, trustees. And I intend to make another meeting regularly, but they won't meet again until September the 30th, and that's the Coachella Valley Association of Go Governments, CBAC. I intend to, to make those, the, the executive meetings. Now, I have four seconds. To left, and I haven't even pointed out what I'm here for. I'm here to, to convert this college of the desert to a four-year college. That's what I'm here for. Well, thank you so much for your comments. Thank you, Mayor. All right. And that's what Thanks. I'm pushing. Okay. And I will continue pushing. Thank you very much. You are welcome. All right. That finishes our speakers that have turned in a yellow uh, slip. Uh, yes, Dana. Uh, <clears throat> Madam Mayor. There we go. Uh, Madam Mayor, well, I would like to um, suggest that our city manager prepare a draft resolution supporting water import, uh, maybe two drafts, one draft supporting saltwater import and one draft not supporting saltwater import. <clears throat> and my hope would be that we could have that issue come back to be put on the agenda for our next meeting. Uh, have, uh, where we can discuss that topic. And uh, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm at wit's end in trying to determine why the county, uh, the county resolution is uh, uh, kept apart from any reference to salt water. They recognize the need for import of water uh, and they haven't identified any place where it might be uh, other than the customary locations. And uh, I, think our, I think we should have an opportunity to consider uh, a, what would be a potential maybe uh, uh, either amendment or a potential uh, note letter uh, to, the, uh, to the supervisors. Uh, to let them know what, whatever we decide, 
at that meeting, next meeting, and to uh, <clears throat> see if somebody is around to tell us why the word salt is so verboten in the language uh, relative to uh, the import of water. So <clears throat> if, you, if our city manager would do that, I would appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, the next meeting for the City Council will be on July 18th at 1 o'clock. So we will have the draft resolutions of support prepared for that meeting. Thank you, Isaiah, and thank, thank you. you for your recommendation, Dana. Thank you. Okay, back to the agenda. Uh, if you would like to speak and you haven't filled out a yellow slip, you are welcome to come up and do so uh, right now. Uh, it will be on an item that is not on our agenda. So uh, we welcome you, and if I see no one standing up, so uh, we will move on to uh, closing that portion of our agenda and moving on to mm -hmm. City Council board member comments and reports. First, we'll start with Charlie. Well, I have nothing to say right now, but I do have a question, Dana, on the Salton Sea. <clears throat> it certainly doesn't seem like the word salt was over missed that there's a reason for it, they took it out. And I think that's where you're going. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think so be too, but I'd like to know why. That's me too. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for your comments. All right. Dana, did you have any additional comments? No, I reports? think I've, I've spoken enough so, so okay. far today. <laughs> All right, so then we'll move on to this side and start with Ted. <clears throat> Thank you, Iris. Uh, this last week, I had a few photos demonstrating the progress on the Dell Webb Clubhouse shared with me. Uh, please pull those <clears throat> photos up on the screen. Here is a little update. The stone veneer is well underway throughout the building. You can see the beautiful columns in the picture on the screen. Putting greens are in place and currently being sprigged. This anticipated the greens will be ready by September 1st. Draw, drywalling is well underway within the buildings. The sports court concrete slab is expected to be started mid-July. Rooftop units are in place and hookups are continuing. Extension of the parking lot is currently expected to be accomplished in the month of August. The population of the building with movable furniture and fixtures as fitness equipment, galley slash bar equipment, and the golf simulator are expected in early November. The golf simulator, by the way, is a program where you can literally play different courses around the world. And that's going to be uh, installed at the clubhouse at Del Webb. Uh, they're really doing some exciting things. While some of these dates may be adjusted forward or backwards as the progress, progress progresses, the clubhouse really is coming along very nicely. Also, I have the inside scoop for you. A little bit of play on words, as you will hear. Coming very soon on July 9th, from 5 to 7 p.m., Ben & Jerry's at the River is celebrating summer by hosting the First Responders Ice Cream Social. Like coffee with a cup, this outreach event allows residents to get to know the men and women who protect and serve our community in a comfortable and familiar setting. Officers from the Rancher Mirage Police and Fire Departments will be on hand to discuss community-related topics while enjoying a cold, delicious, creamy scoop. I hope to see you there. Come and enjoy a free cone and take advantage of this cool opportunity to meet and greet some of Rancho Mirage's finest. Those of you that have participated in uh, Coffee with the Cop will also appreciate meeting first responders. These are the people that first appear in the event of an emergency, whether it be law enforcement or fire, that are critical to saving the life before medical attention arrives. 
it's a great opportunity to be with people that we consider the finest. One other point I'd like to mention is last week, the League of California Cities had their meetings in Newport, which I attended. And one of the sessions at that meeting is titled, How is your city performing? Are you sure? Question mark. And let me say this. There is nothing, and I repeat, nothing I could be more certain about is the solidity of our city from a standpoint of both financial and infrastructure. And when you listen to the other cities as to where they are and where we are, you recognize the value of the 92270 zip code. It's magical. And when we talk about our financial conditions and we talk about the fact that we have no unfunded pension liability, others in the room go, go ooh and ah and so forth, and justifiably so. So that this particular event, how is your city performing? I must tell you, and everybody probably that is watching this program recognize, recognizes the fact that thank you very much. We're doing extremely well. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Next will be Richard. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, thank you, Ted. Uh, Ted briefly touched on the meeting which we attended in Newport from the League of California Cities. They do this annually and they bring together the best and brightest people in city management to talk about how your city's doing, but also bringing you together to learn a lot more about how it does operate. So there were several really outstanding sessions that I was able to attend. One of them had to do with engaging social media with your city, which is continuing to get more and more attention. Also, there was a session on tackling homelessness and one on effective communication skills between the city council and the city manager. So we all learned a little bit better as to how we communicate the best way to go forward uh, with the direction of the city. And uh, it was a very interesting meeting. And of course, we had one of the best city managers there to partake in the event. The last day, the advanced leadership focus was on city finances and mastering the role of the council member. So we learned a lot more about our own finances. And as Ted mentioned, we are probably one of the top cities in the state of California as far as being quality, financially very strong. So overall, the three days provided insight on the running of a successful city in today's challenging times. And we'll look forward to going back year after year and meeting with our peers to learn more about making your city is the best it can be. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Now, are you going to go on with um, your next presentation? From if you would like, or I can go after you, whichever we'll you Go right like. ahead. Okay. Thank you. And uh, this is a little bit different uh, topic than we've been talking about. But as you know, the city supports various nonprofits in the community. These nonprofits are crucial to filling the gaps of community need that are not fully met by either public or private sectors. Today, I've invited the Children's Discovery Museum of the Desert to come share what they're doing at the current museum. Their mission is to be on a valuable community resource for children and families to experience the joy of learning about themselves and the world around. Today, we are fortunate to have Victoria Balski. She's a director of a development with a museum, and she's going to talk a little bit about what the museum is doing these days and how you can support the museum as we see the need in the future. So, uh, Victoria, it's great to have you here, and it's all yours. Thank you so much for having me. 
And I have a PowerPoint ready for you guys. I'm going to let you all know what's happening at the Children's Discovery Museum. So let's start off with some numbers. Here is our attendance to date. You can see some promising increase there from last year. Um, and that isn't even till the end of June, so that's already going to grow for our fiscal year. And we have a lot to offer at the Children's Museum. We are, our camp is underway currently, so um, if you have the kiddos, send them over to our camp. We're getting excellent feedback from both the campers and their parents. Um, we also have um, great creativity workshops on the weekends. Our school tour program is very popular, and we are still developing our Museum on the Go program, which uh, we started our first one a couple weeks ago, and it went really well, so we'd like to keep on uh, developing that program. And here are a couple pictures of our fans. Um, we have our toddler enrollment programs, which are increasing in popularity. Um, right there, we have our little scientists in the garden and our little chefs. And we have an excellent early childhood education um, expert, and she is there for all those young parents and grandparents that um, want to know more about early childhood development. And here is a representation of what our baby town is going to look like. Uh, thanks to the city of Rancho Mirage, we are going to be able to install that in a, the next couple weeks. So if you get a chance, come over and check that out. And also, thanks to the city of Rancho Mirage, we were able to host a design charrette. And we welcomed the design firm, MIG Portico, to come and um, lead this design charrette. And it was, um, I guess you would call it a think tank. And we had several community members come and give their ideas for our new outdoor exhibit master plan. And for those of you that attended, thank you very much. And coming up for our events, we have our first annual Kid Dependence Day. We've never um, hosted 4th of July before, so this is definitely a first. And we have a lot of patriotic activities on the docket there. And also on July 19th, we are hosting UCP, where they present uh, specialized bikes for children with disabilities. So we're really excited to be a part of that. And here's our schedule for fall. We have a lot going on. National Senior Citizens Day, Worldwide Day of Play, Sensory Sunday, Scarecrow Building, Boozeum, and of course, Touch a Truck. And there you see some kids enjoying our very popular Touch a Truck events. And um, a little throwback to last May, we had our chocolate soiree fundraiser, and it was we had such excellent feedback with that. We are definitely going to bring that back next year. And this is our traveling exhibit, Splash and Bubbles. It is currently in one of our galleries. So if you haven't had a chance to see that, definitely join Splash Bubbles and the Reef Town Rangers. And they will be here until September 22nd. And promptly after that, we are bringing dinosaurs, land of fire and ice. So this one, I think, will be a very popular exhibit for the kids. And um, it will be here during a time that is uh, historically a slow season for us in September. So hopefully this will help our numbers. And if you'd like to know about how you can support CDMOD, um, you can attend our programs, events, and fundraisers. You can volunteer. You can donate, of course, or you can sponsor an event, program, or exhibit. And you can call me, of course, if you guys need more info. And of course, thank you so much to the city of Rancho Mirage. We love you guys at CEDMOD and really appreciate all the support you've provided for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. <laughs> There's been a dramatic turnaround in the last year and the number of uh, participants and the number of programs that are offered. A great deal of, of the financial support comes from our city, uh, but we're investing in the children of Rancho Mirage and the rest of the valley. And it's really great to see the number of children that are involved these days 
and uh, <coughs> Carol Scott, our executive director, has just done an excellent job on building up the programs. So I invite you all to come by, stop by, meet Carol, and meet the rest of the staff, and participate in some of the programs. It's really a, a great uh, opportunity now to see the children benefiting in the city of Rancho Mirage. Thank you again. Madam Chair? Yes, Dana. Before you, before you leave, uh, my wife was showing me yesterday on a channel that I'm not sure what it was or how to get to it, but you could probably Google it. If you Googled petting a live whale, uh, it is one of the most interesting videos I've seen, but it's somebody on a, like a rubber raft out in the ocean, wild ocean, with a major size whale bringing its head up to be petted by the fella who was in the, uh, uh, the rubber raft or whatever raft it was. Just kept petting him, and he'd, if he'd take his hand down, if the, if the um, whale would descend slightly, uh, then it would come right back up, and he'd start petting it again. It is one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen. And if you could get that video and show something like that, I think it would be uh, well-received by children and uh, those who are young at heart. Thank you, Dana. And thank you so much for your presentation. I had the opportunity yesterday of visiting your uh, design charrette that um, was presented by a number of experts. It was very enlightening. Uh, your, the presentations of what the possibilities are for children and their growth and the equipment that will provide enormous growth in so many areas, whether it's social interaction, uh, eliminating any kind of fear of heights, knowing how to get along with other children, how to make decisions. It was quite remarkable, the selection of opportunities that were presented, and to think that we are going to be seeing that in the very near future on the back area, which is outside of the museum, is, is quite a, a prize for all of us in the Coachella Valley. It's all new and different. Um, it'll bring people from all over. And um, our most important uh, ingredient in life are our children. And uh, we're so thrilled that you have such an active part in making their lives more enriched. So thank you again. OK, any other comments about? OK. All righty, thank you again. So now I will move on to my comments uh, about the League of Cities uh, workshop and uh, seminar. Uh, I attended also, and it was quite a place. And people often ask about these uh, little getaways where we, we learn so much, and they want to know very often what we're learning. And I know that Ted and Richard uh, mentioned, uh, mentioned a few things. They touched on a, a few uh, of the categories and lectures that we were able to participate in. But I did put together a few photos that will give you a little bit more insight because uh, one of the first ones, lectures that I attended, was um, effective communications with staff and colleagues, the words to say, how to use them, and how not to use them. And as you can see, there was the speaker who wrote the book on it, and uh, an example of what you say and what you mean and how not to say it. Um, also, the positive words. They're still please and thank you. Those are the bottom line of getting through the day in a peaceful, harmonious, and uh, a, a, a warm uh, day with your colleagues. Lots of uh, words that uh, people uh, can use. Uh, thankful, awesome, grateful, wonderful, uh, admirable. These are the things that people very often forget to use when they're dealing with a colleague or a staff member. Everyone wants to be appreciated. And, and it was so interesting to uh, see how these words were put in a formal setting so we could all learn. Paying compliments is very, very important. Uh, one of the other uh, lectures dealt with staying strong in the face of disaster. Uh, this was especially related to huge fires 
in California and the following floods and landslides and the mudslides, which were even worse. Uh, it was made very interesting. Uh, some of the city leaders shared their experiences and the insightful lessons that they learned on how to react during uh, the recovery. Uh, very beneficial to a lot of us, especially since we live here in uh, areas where we do have fires, we have floods, we're always concerned about uh, earthquakes. So it was uh, quite beneficial. Also, how to develop successful city school partnerships and the future of the local government workforce. Uh, demystifying land use and planning. Uh, this session featured the fundamentals of working with staff members to reach the greatest potential possible. And of course, there were sessions dealing with homelessness, city leadership, city finances, and much, much more. As you can see, there were a number of topics uh, touched on, affordable housing, uh, development investment programs. Could you put the back up a little bit for a minute? Uh, housing development incentives, up zones around transit areas. And one of the ones that a lot of us found interesting were the limits that single family only zoning is going to have. They talked about increasing density and uh, the limits or elimination of parking requirements. So it went on and on of for most of us, extremely interesting. And uh, there was a lot of great takeaway. And uh, it was very informative. And uh, we all came away much more enriched on how to run a better city, possibly, but how much more that we appreciate the city of Rancho Mirage. And for all of us who have worked in other cities, as uh, Ted and uh, Richard have said, Rancho Mirage is quite a gem. Um, we get letters all the time from people who come here to work, uh, developers, uh, people who are in the workforce, and they compliment us on our fire department, our law enforcement, our ability to put programs through, our ability to get their permits uh, put through quickly. So we are thrilled with what we're doing, but it's always good to hear what other people are doing, just so we can get a little bit more insight. So it was a great opportunity, and uh, it was a lot of good stuff. So the next thing I wanted to mention also is heat warming and heat stroke. Um, so just in case you haven't noticed, the summer heat is upon us. So during this time, it is important to remember to keep yourself and your pets safe. And here are just a few tips on staying cool. And as you can see, this little guy on the uh, left side of your screen uh, belongs to none other than our city attorney, Stephen. Okay, and this is, um, this is Barkley. Barkley is protecting his eyes, which is really important, uh, that something that people forget about. Um, one of the things you should pay a lot of attention to are um, taking it easy during the hottest part of the days. Schedule your errands in the early morning or evening. Wear a hat with a large brim or keep an umbrella on hand and remember to use it. I use mine all the time walking to and from the car and uh, people very often comment about what a smart idea is, especially when they go into hot areas. Third of all, wear loose fitting clothing and be sure to drink lots of fluids. Dehydration can be very dangerous, and it is advisable not to leave plastic bottles of liquid in your vehicle. Take them with you when you depart your vehicle, and uh, you don't want to just leave them to get hot. Also, regarding the special care of your pets, remember the ground is incredibly hot, so be mindful of your pet's feet. Never, ever leave a pet in your vehicle and uh, never leave a person in your vehicle. Even if the windows are cracked, your car's interior can get very quickly reaching a uh, very unsafe temperature. And additionally, you, if you have to be outside, always carry a container of water, avoid caffeine and alcohol, apply sunblock as needed throughout the day, 
and be sure to watch for signs of heat stroke. Uh, this is something that a lot of people don't even think about, but as you can see, it's you would stop sweating, you get dry, hot, red skin, you might become dizzy or have headaches, uh, you would have shallow breathing, you might get nauseous, or even lose consciousness. So, uh, we can't enforce you uh, to think about uh, keeping cooler, keeping safer, and if for some reason your electricity or your uh, power goes out, know where you can find a um, cooling center. This was something that people very rarely think about. You need to think about contacting your cooling center nearest you ahead of time. Don't wait until the last minute where your electricity has gone off and then you have to start looking for some. So try to make yourself aware of where a new, near cooling center is and uh, if you should need one, at least they would be welcoming to you. And that is about it. Um, there's one last uh, little video, because if it's hot outside, chances are you're gonna have your air conditioning on inside, and your pet is gonna love being right in front of it. And this is, this is Eddie, who is enjoying uh, the uh, comforts of air conditioning in Steve's house. So thank you all, thank you for listening, and please be safe, please be careful, and um, we'll move on to the next item. Okay, that is going to be covered by our city manager, Isaiah Hagerman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a, a couple updates for the council. Um, uh, yesterday, we attended our Cove Communities uh, Award Luncheon, where we get to recognize uh, members from our fire and police department for the great work that they do in our community. And uh, a, a special thing that happened yesterday was, um, you'll recall that uh, one of our deputies um, had a, a medical emergency and it was very serious. Um, the prognosis that he was, uh, or his family was getting were 90% chance he was gonna be brain dead. He had to be airlifted to UCLA Medical Center. Um, he was in the hospital for over a month. Uh, the city uh, donated $2,500 to him and his medical bills and for his family. And uh, the great part of yesterday was he received an award and he was there in person to receive it. And he is expected to make a full recovery and return to duty uh, after his recovery. So, so uh, just a complete miracle. Uh, he's a fighter. He's a strong young man and uh, he pulled through, so Deputy Cosby, it was great to see you yesterday. Great. Um, also, uh, along our public safety front, uh, just a few days ago, the mayor received an email. Uh, we had a resident uh, utilize our ambulance service a couple times during the month for medical emergencies, and uh, so I just wanna read the last sentence of the email, I won't read the whole thing to you, uh, but uh, he provided some feedback on his service, and this is how he concluded his email. The fire department and EMTs in Rancho Mirage are the best ever. And uh, getting to work with them, uh, you know that they train very hard. Uh, they uh, utilize pit crew CPR and the service that they provide to our community is fantastic. Uh, so Chief Davis, please pass along our appreciation uh, to our stations for the hard work that they do for our community on a daily basis. Um, Staff will be uh, bringing an item back to the council um, on the 17th of July at our next meeting. We've been funding a uh, forensic technician position via the Cove communities. So Ranch Mirage, Palm Desert, and Indian Wells have been sharing the cost of this position uh, for the last five years. Uh, the city of Palm Desert notified Ranch Mirage and Indian Wells uh, that they are no longer going to fund this position. Uh, I met with the uh, city manager of Indian Wells, and uh, after reviewing uh, this position, uh, both our cities feel it is necessary uh, to maintain this position. And so uh, the forensic technician is a vital component um, with property crime and collecting of evidence uh, and service to our community. And the reason that we've been contracting for that position for the last five years is if you don't contract for the position, you have to rely on the county and you will get a uh, out of the thermal station 
and you will get a substandard response time with a substandard product. And so uh, the two cities, Ranch Mirage and Indian Wells, uh, are finalizing the terms of an agreement to keep that position uh, for our two cities. So uh, since we would be the only two cities funding this position, uh, this position would only service our two communities. At the same time, uh, we are going to most likely develop a fee schedule so that if this resource is ever requested by the city of Palm Desert, there will be appropriate fees to reimburse the two cities for the cost of this position. Uh, but both cities are in alignment that uh, this is not a cut that we wanna make to our public safety and that uh, this forensic technician position is very valuable to our communities. So we will be bringing that agreement forward to the council on the 17th for consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Isaiah. Well, we've had a lot of information and all of it uh, very interesting. So now we'll move on to our minutes. And if there are no additions or corrections, may I have a, a motion? And a I'll second? make the motion to accept. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, thank you, Christy. And now we'll move on to our consent calendar, and that will also be handled by our city manager, Isaiah Hagerman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Members of the City Council, you have six items for consideration on your consent calendar today. Item number one is to adopt a resolution authorizing the city treasurer to invest the Children Discovery Museum uh, funds into the city investment pool. Uh, so we do this to help the Discovery Museum uh, better leverage their own money. Uh, we financially support the Children's <laughs> Discovery Museum, and uh, by allowing them to utilize our investment pool, uh, they're able to do better uh, on their own money, uh, earn more interest, and keep more of that interest. So because they're a relatively small portfolio, um, if they do it alone, their fees are usually pretty large and eat up most of the interest earnings that they get on their money. So by allowing them to utilize the city pool, it fits within the city's process uh, and it helps them, which in return helps us. And there are no costs to the Children's Discovery Museum and the impacts to the city are very minimal. Uh, we also do this for the Joslin Center, for the Library Foundation Board, which is a 501c3, and the Writers Festival, which is also a 501c3. So organizations that uh, we're financially supporting, we uh, have offered this uh, as an option to help them do better with their own money. Item number two is to uh, approve uh, entering into a long-term renewable energy contract uh, with Mountain View uh, on behalf of the Ranch Mirage Energy Authority. Item number three is to award a contract for the Dinosaur Pavement uh, Project, and that will run from Plumlee to Duval. And that is to the lowest responsive bidder. Item number four is the final acceptance of City Project 19347. Item number five is the final acceptance of the uh, Storm Drain Maintenance Project. And item number six are demands. Uh, we do have a public request to speak on items one and five, so I would request that the council hold those for separate discussion. Okay, thank Four you, I see. One and five. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, we have two people that would like to speak. Uh, actually, it's one person, and that's Brad Anderson. And uh, would you come up to the podium and... Uh, Maybe you'll t start on item number one. You bet. Thank you. Uh, Brad Anderson, City Ranch Mirage. Um, I think uh, the city's uh, response or city's uh, donations or support of the, uh, the Discovery Museum, Children's Discovery Museum, is a great thing. I think it's great for the city. It's been here for a long time. Uh, of course, that organization is is a bigger organization than this that uh, Ranch Mirage location, but I'm opposed to uh, this uh, investing of their monies. Um, just for the sole purpose, uh, I think if the city is prone to do that, they should probably do it for every nonprofit that the city uh, that's in the city or or would benefit the city in some way. So just for that sake, I would think that maybe uh, policies can be set out to maybe establish that in the future. And uh, that's my only uh, opinion on that topic. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. maybe you'll move on to item number five. You bet, thank you. Uh, and that one's, uh, I think it's a great thing. I think it was, uh, uh, that's the city uh, draining, cleaning, and it was done at, I believe, 39,000, something like that. It took them about a month to do. And that benefits the city in ways that most people won't know, and that's, that's gonna keep mosquito counts. That's gonna keep those drains clean and flowing. And I would like to possibly see the city maybe do that more often than they already do. And, and maybe make that uh, available to the private clubs uh, uh, golf courses, whatever, any gated community that they have their own retention basins and uh, detention basins and uh, catch basins and uh, bubble boxes and all those things that collect water uh, that stagnate after a while. If you could go in and clean those out, the city, I can honestly say the city would have done everything they can do to control mosquitoes in the city. And uh, that uh, I know we're going to go back in West Nile again, but at the end of Morningside there, um, I have very good experience. I worked in the city with the last time the mosquito uh, West Nile broke out, I think it's 2004 or five, and I was lucky enough to be the guy that went around to every little single property in the city. And a lot of these little clubs at the end of Morningside, I know for one, they have these little bubbler boxes, and that's just little drains that they put in people's yards to collect water, or it spurts water usually, they're actually put in backwards, actually, uh, when the uh, developer put those in. And that's another thing the planning department should probably follow up on, or, or I, I think it's the planning department, because they don't install them correctly. And so anyway, that's a, that's a side caveat to that whole story. But uh, I think it's a good thing, and I think we should probably look into uh, adding that for private clubs, maybe at a discounted rate. That would be the best money for health, public safety, that you could spend. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, if there are no other comments, we will move on to a vote uh, for the consent calendar. May I have a motion? Move approval of all items, all six. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and second, please vote. Motion carries five zero. Thank you, Christy. All right, now we'll move on to our reports and informational items. And uh, item number seven, and it's the summer reading program update by our uh, library executive director and uh, the executive director also of our observatory, Aaron Espinoza. Good afternoon, Mayor, Madam Mayor, city council and city staff. On June 24th, we kicked off the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory's 24th Annual Summer Reading Club. As in the past, the Summer Reading Club will be an eight-week program ending on August 2nd. This year's theme is Reading Around the World, where we will focus on each of the seven continents with the eighth week focused on the world. We are very excited that this year's Summer Reading Club is fully sponsored by the Brian and Patricia A. Herman Fund for the third consecutive year. It is with great donors and community partners that we have been able to provide such a wonderful program to patrons of all ages. Again, we are, this year we are encouraging all readers, regardless of their age, to sign up for the Summer Reading Club. Whether you are reading a book to yourself, reading to a child or an elderly adult, or listening to an audiobook while you travel for the summer, we want to encourage all types of reading. Depending on your age, there are increments of 5, 10, 20, and 25 minutes of reading. Once these increments are obtained, you will move on to the next level. Each log allows you to earn book bucks, which can be spent on smaller prizes, or for 10 book bucks, can be turned in for one raffle ticket. New this year is the addition of the $5 and $10 book bucks. So not, all, not only are we encouraging reading, but for many, we are encouraging the idea of money and savings. Our big raffle will be held on July 30th at our final big show featuring kids imagination. At this show, participants that have completed at least one log will be able to win, will be able to win great prizes, including family four packs to Disneyland and Universal Studios, four annual passes to the Palm Springs Aerial Tram, the Living Desert Zoo and Gardens, and the Children's Discovery Museum of the Desert. To encourage adults, including young adults, 
we will be giving away an iPad or two and gift cards to local restaurants and hotels. Throughout the summer reading club, there will also be Barnes and Noble gift cards and opportunities to name stars for those who attend our programs throughout the summer. As of this morning, we have 950 participants with over 300 completed logs. As the, as the summer continues and families come back from vacation, we know that these numbers will rise. As previously mentioned, our program is broken down into eight weeks. Next week, we will be focusing on Africa. For each week, our staff picked out several facts with each continent and being broke down each day into different, a different program type. Magnetic Monday is focused on STEAM and STEM programming. Tuesday's Big Show brings a diverse group of programs each week, including magicians, jugglers, musicians, and dancers. Wacky Wednesday is also a diverse group of programs that differs each week, including art projects, playing pickleball and badminton, and three separate days of bike giveaways. One I am very excited for is on July 24th, where we will be hosting a flying paint event in which participants will be able to help us create an art installation for our children's room using staff-made paint cannon and a Jackson Pollock style of painting. I bring to you our staff paint cannon. So you'll simply put, we'll put paint on the end here, we'll simply pull it back and we'll let it go and it will create the Jackson, uh, Jackson Pollock style. Okay. Tropical Thursday is focused on Aaron, our project. Yes. Can we use that to decorate the mayor's office? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'll make that your call. You think, mayor? Yeah, if I can do it. <laughs> Tropical Thursday is focused on art projects, including Monet's impressionist paintings by using finger paint, Japanese carp kites, Aboriginal dot paintings, and much more. Today, for Arctic Slime, we had 371 participants. Wow. Film Friday is a mixture of children's films with some older titles with new movies coming out like Toy Story 4, The Lion King, and The Lego Movie. For our teen patrons, we have Teen Tuesday, which we have activities planned throughout the summer. And on alternating Fridays, we will host teen movies, including Aquaman and Captain Marvel. We would like to thank the Living Desert and the, the Desert Recreation District for all, and all of our other community partners for helping the Summer Reading Club a success. Reading is essential to the mission of our lifelong learning mission. We all know that we have some readers who are beyond avid, but another program we have throughout the summer is our kids' book discussion group. Listening to our patrons' ideas, this year we have two age groups, six through nine, which is new this year, and nine through 12. Each participant gets a free book, lunch, and the opportunity to discuss the book they just read. These discussion groups have been great for helping kids learn communication skills, teaching different viewpoints, different ways of expression, allowing the kids to discuss and disagree without resorting to emotional arguments, and all while working on public speaking. We are excited to announce this summer that we are inviting all artists ages 3 to 17 to participate in our library card design contest. Artists can submit their artwork using any 2D art, including crayons, markers, colored pencils, computer software, and much more. Entry forms are in the children's room for, for more details. Designs must be received by July 16th, and the winning design will be announced at the at the July 23rd Big Show, with the winner's artwork becoming the official children's library card design for the next year. We wanted to give our artists an opportunity to express themselves and to show what the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory looks like to them. We have already received some amazing submissions, so I'm sure picking a winner is going to be hard. Another opportunity that is new to the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory is children's theater. Thanks to the generous donation of the Richard Brooke Foundation, staff has been working with Limon Carr Productions to bring children's theater to the library in three different programs. Our first opportunity, which is in conjunction with our summer reading club, is the Inspire Imagination Short Story Contest. We are encouraging children to stretch their imaginations 
by writing a short story, then watching their idea come to life as professional improv actors and musicians recreate their stories in front of a live audience at our September 4th family night. The deadline to submit their stories is July 23rd, with the winners being announced on July 30th. Moving a bit outside the summer reading club dates is the children's theater training workshops. We encourage children between the ages of seven and 17 to take a crash course in musical theater with vocals, dance, and acting led by musical theater professionals, Ray Limon, Joshua Carr, and Joanne Mulrooney Moser. Sessions will be held Tuesday th through Thursday with each day focusing on a different type of musical theater. Workshops will take place at the library and observatory's community room with registration opening on Monday, August 26. The children's theater program will culminate with a performance on November 16th at 7 p.m. at the Rancho Mirage Amphitheater by presenting a fully staged Broadway musical production of Susical Junior with fully orchestrated tracks, scenery, props, and costumes. Registration will start in early September with auditions taking place on September 24th, 25th, and 26th. To audition, each performer must prepare a 30 second cut to be sung and then they will be asked to dance. Casting notices will be emailed and posted at the library on Saturday, September 28th. We are excited about the opportunity to bring children's theater to the city of Rancho Mirage. There were a lot of dates and programs mentioned, so please come down to the library for more information or you may go onto our website at www dot rancho mirage library dot org as you can see we have been and will continue to be busy over at the library and observatory for the foreseeable future i'd like to mention that all of the programs mentioned today are made possible to our patrons and to the public free of charge thanks to our donors the support of our city council and city staff thank you and i'd be happy to answer any questions well thank Question. you so much Yes. The, uh, the program on November 16th, that's, is that a one-time uh, program or is that going to be ongoing as a series? It's going to be a one-time production show. Looks great. Uh, give us an opportunity to utilize that facility, which is underused at this time. So that's really wonderful. Yes. Okay. Any other comments from council? Well, I, I will. I will say... Thank you for working with Lamone Carr, bringing them on board. They're a wealth of knowledge and love of working with the city, with you guys and with Isaiah and with Gabe. All, all well and done and very good for the city. Thank you. Thank you. And the only comment I can make is, wow, I am just astounded at sometimes when I walk into the library and see what's going on and see all the programs. I mean, I was blown away by your decorating gingerbread houses <clears throat> last December. And uh, when you look at this assortment of enriching opportunities for all these children all summer long, it is just mind boggling. Your staff is incredible. You have been incredible as a leader and we are so thankful for the work you are doing. Thank you. No other comments? Any comments from the audience? Okay, the public, seeing none, we will close the public comments. And thank you again, Aaron. Okay, all right, we'll move on to public hearings and item number eight. And um, this is going to be handled by uh, Tiana McAmel. She's our senior management analyst. And this is regarding solid waste, recyclables collection, and disposal charges for fiscal year 2019 slash 20. Thank, Thank you. you, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. The item I'll be discussing today is a resolution approving solid waste and recycling collection and disposal rates. This is an annual update of the fees to set rates for the coming fiscal year based on the contract with Burtec. The fees are compromised of three components, a collection fee, disposal fee, and an annual reconciliation of the actual disposal costs. The table on the screen summarizes the proposed change in the residential rate for an individual residence with twice a week walk-in service. Adding the increase for both the collection and disposal components, the new residential rate will increase from 
$18.81 a month to $19.39 a month. This is roughly a 3% increase and a dollar amount increase of 58 cents per month. For comparison purposes, Indian Wells residents pay $21.12 a month for once per week pickup, and Palm Desert residents pay $24.48 for once per week pickup. With a 58 cent increase, Ranch Mirage residents still pay less than Indian Wells and Palm Desert residents for an additional pickup per week, and that is walk-in service. <clears throat> Commercial rates are also increasing at a rate of two to three percent based on the service of the individual customer. Based off of the information in the staff report, staff recommends the city council approve the annual rate adjustment. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Tiana. Any questions from the council? Nope. Okay. Any questions from the public? Okay. Seeing none, we will close the public comments and move back to Isaiah. Oh, I just wanted to take a second to uh, recognize our service provider, Burtech. Uh, Mike Vito's in the audience. Mike, thank you for the work you guys do in our community. We get nothing but positive comments on the level of service uh, that's provided to Ranch Mirage. So thank you guys for all your hard work. And thank you for being here. It's always good to see you. All right. So may I have a... Um Move that we adopt resolution 2019 next in order, establishing solid waste and recycling collection and disposal rates for all classes of customers within the jurisdiction of the city of Ranch Mirage, effective July 1, 2019. Okay. Second. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. Now we'll move on to item number nine. And... Uh, this is going to be also be presented by Tiana, and this is a re resolution approving adjusted rate schedule for Rancho Mirage Energy Authority. Thank you again, Madam Mayor and members of the City Council. So this next item I'll be discussing is a resolution approving adjusted electric generation rate schedules for Rancho Mirage Energy Authority, RMEA. And I'm going to jump right in with a one-year update on the program. I've put together a presentation, and in this presentation, I will talk about RMEA's story, the different choices available in the program, the accomplishments of the program throughout the year, as well as challenges we faced, a preview of the future, and how to get in contact with us. RMEA began providing power to our community May 2018. We launched with a 5% savings on generation rates. Other CCA programs that have launched in SCE territory have launched with a 3% savings. We are the sixth CCA to launch in SCE territory and to date the only operational CCA in the Coachella Valley. We are one of 19 CCA programs in California and between the 19 programs, 86% of the electricity we deliver is greenhouse gas free. RMEA's motto is the power to choose. And through RMEA, our customers have three choices for their electricity, base choice, premium renewable choice, and solar choice. RMEA's base choice is the default choice that offers the best of both worlds, the lowest possible rates and cleaner energy. <clears throat> this plan is 50% carbon free and not only meets but exceeds, exceeds the state's 2020 renewable goals. RMEA's premium renewable choice offers 100% renewable energy and through this choice customers can opt up for a very affordable cost. The average residential account in Ranch Mirage uses 1,100 kilowatts per month and at 0.4 cents uh, per kilowatt hour above the base choice rate, the cost to opt up for the average residential account is only $4.40 a month for 100% renewable energy. And I mention this every time I'm up here because it's so great, but all city facilities, 160 meters, are running on 100% renewable energy thanks to the decision of the council to opt up. <laughs> Given the sun's power in the desert, RMEA wanted to enhance the benefits for our solar net metering customers within our community, and we've done this through our Solar Choice Plan. This plan offers the same benefits as SCE, plus the added benefit of a higher net surplus compensation rate, which means residents and businesses see more in return when their, their system generates surplus power. Another benefit of the solar program is customers' generation charges and credits are escrowed for a full year. So this allows a customer a 12 month period to net out any high summer usage against any system generated credits accumulated in the cooler months. 
Now I'd like to focus on some of the accomplishments of the program. The primary goal of RMEA is to help reduce our community's SCE bills by providing electricity at lower rates than SCE. At a 5% savings, the estimated savings to our community after one year of operations was estimated to be 1.4 million. RMEA has exceeded this goal by saving our community 1.46 million. And to date, nearly 100% of our community has chosen RMEA, and we've maintained this participation rate since launching one year ago. In addition to community savings, RMEA has also enabled the city to establish a residential solar rebate program. This program offers residents a $500 rebate to install new solar power systems or expand an existing solar power system. Within RMEA's first year, 191 customers have received a total of 95,500 in rebates, which is another accomplishment of RMEA. Another accomplishment is the program secured a renewable energy long-term contract for 22 megawatts of wind power from the windmills right here in North Palm Springs. This investment into local energy generation project will expand RMEA's renewable energy portfolio in the Coachella Valley. We have had a lot of accomplishments, and with that, we have had some challenges. The first challenge we experienced was SCE delaying enrollment into the program for our customers. For those affected, SCE reversed charges and rebuild customers so they received their 5% date savings dating back to the program's launch. This was and still is a common challenge with CCAs launching across the entire SCE territory. The second challenge we experienced was when SCE did a billing upgrade with no notice to RMEA or our customers. This billing upgrade affected thousands of customers across SCE's entire territory, so not just our Rancho Mirage residents. And unfortunately, it did impact a percentage of our residents. Those affected experienced delayed bills due to SCE not processing and billing usage. Part of the reason we started or RMEA was created was for customer advocacy for our residents and for our businesses. We work diligently to correct any errors that have been made. And as with all new programs, some level of refinement is expected. We will continue to work through challenges as they arise in an effort to make this a better program for the future. And speaking of the future, what's ahead for year two? RMEA will continue offering lower rates than SCE. We will continue to expand local energy efficiency programs and to invest in more local development for renewable energy. We look forward to lowering our community's carbon footprint by investing in opportunities in pursuit of a sustainable future. And as always, if residents and businesses have any questions, I encourage them to please call, email, or come into City Hall, and I would be happy to help. With that, based off of the content in my staff report, staff recommends adjusting RMEA rates to reconfirm the 5% savings provided to customers. That concludes my presentation, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Well, thank you, Tiana. Any questions from Worcester. Council? It's, a, it's a, great, a great, great program. It really, uh, I think it even went over what we anticipated. So congratulations to everybody. Thank you. Okay, Richard? Tiana, where'd you get all that enthusiasm? <laughs> <laughs> You are, you are treating RMEA as if it were your child. You, you know, this, great job. this has become my baby, and it is so wonderful. We've had such an exciting year, and we're really looking forward to year two. Bigger and better Very next year. That's right. Very okay. good. And also, have we noticed the fabulous new hairdo? It looks <laughs> great. That's also where some of the excitement comes from. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist that. Sorry. <laughs> No, uh, uh, Tiana's done a great job with this program, and a lot of the success that you see is because of her energy and excitement that she brings into it. And so when somebody has a question or uh, they call us, they're hitting Tiana, and uh, they're always leaving happy. Uh, so, Tiana, I just wanted to take a second to say thank you for all your hard work on this. It's not always easy, but you've done a great job. And uh, you have your mom and grandma <laughs> in the audience. You guys should be very proud. I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's been a really fun program to be involved with. And I think, uh, you know, from the council standpoint, I think you recognized kind of from the beginning of this process uh, the potential benefits of this program. And, uh, you know, Looking at it from a staff perspective, uh, you know, you guys were willing to take the early criticism that we received for this program 
um, simply because we were the first. Uh, so people who were um, motivated for other reasons, not the best interest of the community, but uh, took shots at uh, you guys for starting this program. And uh, what we tried to do through this process was clearly communicate to our community why we thought we saw the value in this program and what we thought we could uh, do and enhance our community through this program. And so, uh, you know, to kind of see the one year results, um, for me, it was uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, vindication and a victory lap for the council is everything that we set out to do with this program, uh, we've accomplished within the first year and we're just starting. Uh, so I think the future is very bright for this program, and uh, I don't know one person in our community that doesn't want a little relief from our high electric bills. And, uh, you know, one of our struggles uh, that Tiana touched on is, uh, but one of the reasons we started the program was it's very difficult to work with Southern California Edison. And from a customer standpoint, they aren't always the most responsive. Uh, so we wanted to provide a place where people could come into City Hall and ask questions about their bill and actually get some responses that made some sense. Now, uh, along those lines, uh, the, you know, it hasn't always been easy. Um, we've gotten very frustrated here at City Hall with Southern California Edison. And, uh, you know, when they upgraded their billing system, uh, they had a mass billing delay across their whole service territory. We had Rancho Mirage customers uh, call in wondering why they didn't get a bill, and Southern California Edison's call center communicated that it was our fault when it was clearly theirs. So through RMEA, we have a weekly call with Southern California Edison, and uh, we communicated this issue that they were lying to customers about the issue with the bill delay. And they responded in writing, apologizing, and saying that it was a training error on their part. I had to actually post that email on a community Facebook group uh, because of some of the false information that Southern California Edison is uh, releasing via the, their call center. And when you call and talk to them about it, they <laughs> will apologize and just blame it on a training issue. Um, so, you know, from the uh, customer standpoint, it's, it's, uh, it's frustrating, and we understand that. And... Uh, when we approach them with issues, their viewpoint is very different than ours. Um, you know, they, they don't see the need to react quickly or even to respond in some cases uh, where, you know, we have a different level of customer service that we provide here through this, the city. From kind of looking at the future is um, when we started this program, one of the key aspects was local control. Uh, Rancho Mirage is a well-run city. And uh, when a program is going to touch every resident and business within our community, we want to make sure that we can control the aspects of the program uh, to ensure the quality of the program. And uh, to date, no other community has been able to match what we've done. And I don't anticipate they ever will. And that's another reason why we don't join some regional projects. When we can do it better ourselves, we do it Ourself. It's that simple. It's our obligation, and we want to be in the position to be responsive to our community. We don't, we're not one of those cities that just begs for a regional body to take something so that when it goes wrong and somebody needs help, they can just pass it off to somebody else. We want to be in the position to serve our community. Uh, and so with this program, we're just getting started with the investments back into the community. Uh, so I just wanted to take a second to thank the council uh, for their uh, action and uh, investment into this program. And I think as the years go by, um, you know, 1.46 million in the first year alone is a great start, but I think we all view it as a start. And as we continue to operate and things get better mm -hmm. for us, uh, you know, I only see this program getting better. One of the exciting enhancements that we're getting, uh, that we're uh, researching right now is more local, locally run energy efficiency programs. And so we're working with a consultant um, and we will be filing an application with the PUC uh, within a few months to divert some of the energy efficiency funds that are available. Uh, into our community, and then our city will be able to provide more energy efficiency programs right here for our own residents. And again, this is utilizing outside money uh, that wouldn't otherwise get spent in our community. 
And that's just one of many ways that we're starting to reinvest back into the city with this program. So thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. I'd just like to make a comment. Richard and I were on the subcommittee that, uh, we, that went through the development of all of this. And I wanted to just say that uh, uh, this would never have happened uh, at all without Isaiah's, uh, he introduced us to the issue. He guided us. He hired for the city experts to come in and talk to the subcommittee. Uh, so the subcommittee would be willing to continue uh, this adventure uh, into taking over uh, the electricity of the city. It was not a minor issue. It was a gigantic issue. And um, Isaiah knew every ounce of what had to be known. Uh, we, had, we hired experts to advise us. Uh, Richard and I listened uh, to him uh, cross-examine the experts. We had the opportunity uh, to ask questions or cross-examine, but we didn't come into it with the information that uh, Isaiah came into it with. And it was his perseverance, his insight. He's, he made some very uh, heavy decisions with our approval uh, respecting which way to go. And all the time that this was going forward, CVAG came on later after us to um, do the same thing for the CVAG cities. The only difference was uh, they wouldn't have saved the city of Ranch Mirage or any other city anywhere near uh, what we uh, are being saved by the program that we're in uh, on an annual, on a monthly and annual basis. Uh, we are uh, uh, receiving now much more than uh, CVAG was telling the cities that under their plan uh, we would uh, receive an adequate amount. Bottom line was CVAG didn't file their papers on time. State of California had a deadline before uh, any municipality could uh, become a part of the program of taking over the energy uh, distribution and purchasing uh, uh, for their city. Uh, we moved forward. A couple other cities fell by the wayside along with uh, uh, CVAG because they didn't get their documents in on time. And the, the state accepted no excuses. Either you filed it on time or you're out of the picture. And CVAG, which was criticizing us because we were going our own way, still has not implemented a program for any other city here in the valley uh, or any group of cities. So I, I just think it's important for us to acknowledge and be, to be aware of uh, the critical role that uh, Isaiah played in putting this all together. And we heartily thank you for it. And thank you, Dana, for your comments. Yeah, Dana That's... took over two years of meetings that you discussed to get where we got, but <clears throat> you look at now, there'll be other cities trying to emulate what we do, but none of them will operate as well or make as much money as we have done. So it's, it was well worth the time we spent, even though we didn't think we were gonna get there for a while. Uh, it just moved right ahead with Isaiah's guidance and uh, look at the results. I mean, they tell you, yeah. What, what it ended up. Yeah, it's brought about how much money to the uh, city, Isaiah? Uh, so we're anticipating in our rate stabilization reserve about $2 million at the, uh, the end of this fiscal year. And that's rate savings for the public in general, or is that income af after the rate savings that, that the city will be able to use for other related uh, uh, subjects? Yeah, that's, that's the reserve after all costs have been paid for with the program. Right. Um, that you have a yeah, it's. <clears throat> let me just echo this, and I'll make it brief. It's, it's quite remarkable that there's a savings, in addition to the monies that will be available to be used for other aspects of the city, the actual savings for the public, for our residents, is 1.46 million. And the other thing, in the last week or so, that has come up. If any of you have studied the SCE bill, it's very complicated. 
It's not easy to read. Um, and I've gotten a number of calls, and Tiana's done a wonderful job hand-holding, but uh, calls from uh, constituents that say, what in the world have I gotten here? I've gotten two bills. Yeah. I've gotten one from SCE <clears throat> and one from RMEA. Am I paying more money now than I did last year? If I am, I don't think this is a very good deal. Well, it turns out that what they're getting, yes, are two different bills, but previously they got one bill from SCE. And you're getting a bill for one for facilities and one for delivery. It's broken down between SCE and ourselves. And Tiana, with her attitude, goes back, analyzes it, shows them, in fact, you're paying less money than you were a year ago. And she tells a story, and she's too modest about this, but she had one person come in, quite angry, quite upset, and uh, she calmed him down, called Southern California Edison, got the information. When she walked downstairs to the lobby, there was another person there just as upset, this individual leaving said to the person, you're going to leave here very happy. <laughs> what a compliment. I mean, and that takes some doing. That takes yeah. PR to tell somebody when they come in that pissed to be that relaxed and have the right answers. So again, my compliments, 1.46 million saved. Happy customers. Isaiah, great job. Tiana, terrific. Thank you. Yeah, and we had a good example in January of the, you know, power of this program. Um, we had a uh, individual contact us. Uh, he lives on a fixed income in a mobile home in Rancho Mirage. And uh, he said, hey, I'm getting the lowest bills I've had in years. I watch every dollar that I spend. Is this because of your program? And so we did an analysis for that customer. And uh, from May to December, we had saved that uh, customer $190 on his electric bill. Uh, and so somebody that is on a fixed income, that's $190 in their pocket that they can go and spend on other needs that they have. Um, so it was kind of a nice refresher for us as staff uh, of why you do things like this. We realize uh, not every person in our community would be impacted by that number, but we also have a large number in our community that will. And what the program is, is we took over a behind the scenes function of delivering power and procuring that power. So from a customer standpoint, you didn't have to do anything to get that savings. And you're helping the environment because we're doing a greener product than what Southern California Edison provides. So that was a nice little snapshot for us in January of some of the positive things that this program will do. And uh, what we found is a lot of the frustration uh, with the program is stemming from misinformation that people are receiving from Southern California Edison. So uh, Tiana um, came to me and said, over this next year, I'm really going to focus on the community outreach and the communication with our customers to kind of educate and combat that false information that's coming from Edison. Uh, and so, Tiana, thank you for all your work on this. Thank you. Thank you. Is the, public, other is the public? Yeah, just a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we move on to the public hearing, I certainly want to add my compliments. and and. You know, you talk about um, a city that works well, a city that doesn't give up, and these are the examples where we make every opportunity available to our residents, to our businesses, to give them the best we can. We don't give up easily, especially when we know it's right, and uh, this is the leadership that we have in Rancho Mirage, and uh, we will continue to have. So thank you all. Thank you, Richard and uh, Dana. 
for uh, your two years and uh, working with Isaiah and, and making this happen the best way possible. So now we'll open it to public comments. Seeing none, we'll close the public comments and, and uh, Dana can make a motion. I'll make a motion that the, uh, uh, that the City Ted, Council adopt Ted, Resolution 2019 next in order, Sorry. adjusting electric generation rate schedule for Rancho Mirage Energy Authority Community Aggregation Program. And I will supplement that with a motion that the City Council adopt Resolution 2019 next in order, approving adjusted rate schedule for Rancho Mirage Energy Authority, effective with meter reads beginning June 1. 2019, all that together as one. And I will second that. Please vote. Motion carries 5 0. Okay. Well, thank you all for that. Okay, now we're going to move on to um, the action calendar. It's been known to do and that. Item number mm -hmm. 10. Yeah. And uh, this is something that is going to be uh, handled by Kofi. Adamabam and uh, Antobam. We'll get it right one of these days. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much, Kofi. No problem. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the um, City Council. On April 19, 2018, the City Council adopted resolution number 2018 13, establishing Community Facilities District number 4A, that's the Dell Web Project and providing for the levy of special taxes to finance the acquisition and construction of certain public facilities within the district. The City Council also adopted resolution number 2018-14, deeming it necessary to incur bond, deeming it necessary to incur um, bonded debt to finance such um, facilities, such public facilities. The action before you today is to approve the <coughs> issuance of Community Facilities District Number 4A Special Tax Bonds Series 2019-A to reimburse the cost of public improvements and public facilities fees paid by the developer, um, fund bond issuance costs, and other related costs. The proposed bond size is um, approximately 6.9 uh, million and not to exceed 8 million, with an interest rate of 3.95% and a term of 30 years. The bonds are expected to be sold in July and um, closed by the end of July 2019. These bonds are not city debt, and the city has no obligation to pay um, debt service in the event of a default or non-payment by property owners. The pledge revenue for repayment of these bonds are special taxes paid by property owners within Community Facilities District um, number 4A. And um, these taxes ranges from approximately $800 to $1,723 annually. And these are based on the square footage of um, each property. Notices of this special tax is provided to property owners and adequately disclosed when purchasing their homes. Homeowners also have the option of prepaying the special tax um, when they want to. The special taxes will be first levied on all parcels within CFD 4A during the 2019-2020 tax year to pay debt service and admin costs. Approximately 70% of the um, special taxes will come from homes that have already been sold or in escrow and the remaining will be coming from the developer to pay debt service. The city's CFD administrator will be responsible for the annual calculation of the special taxes necessary to pay debt service and admin costs, place the assessments on the county tax roll, and ensure that debt service payments are made on time. On June 13, 2018, 2019, the um, staff met with the 2018-2019 Budget Subcommittee um, and presented this information to the subcommittee. And so staff is recommending that the City Council approve the attached resolution authorizing issuance of the bonds and execution of related documents. With us today is um, Kurt DeCrenis, who is the financial advisor 
to the city on this bond deal. And also we have John Zimmerman who is representing the developer in our midst. That concludes my staff presentation and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Kofi. Any questions or comments from council? Iris, yes. I, I think the most important thing about this issue is that the city of Rancho Mirage has no liability for this issue. And that's the biggest question that people come to us with. Uh, well, are you underwriting those bonds? We are not. We have no liability. We never will. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? <clears throat> Good. Okay. Uh, any comments from the public? Seeing none, we'll close the public comments and uh, move on to a, a motion. Well, I'll make a motion then that the City Council approve resolution number 2019 next in order authorizing the assurance of not to exceed 8 million aggregated principal amount of City of Rancho Mirage Community Facilities District Number 4A Delwood Project Special Tax Bonds Series 2019A, approving the execute, execution and delivery of the indenture, a bond purchase agreement, a continuing disclosure agreement, and the preparation of an official statement and other matters related thereto. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, Christy. And now we are going to move on to item number 11. And this is uh, going to be presented by Jesse Eckenroth, the Director of Public Works. And it is related to approvals associated with California Governor's Office of Emergency Services from Form 130, Respecting Financial Assistance and Disaster Relief. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Madam Mayor, City Council. Uh, the city recently completed road repairs to both Frank Sinatra Drive and Country Club Drive as a result of storm damage from the Valentine's Day flood. The city is seeking reimbursement through the Federal Highway Administration funds uh, that Caltrans administers, and the city is also seeking reimbursement from FEMA and state funds. The FEMA and state reimbursement program is managed through the Governor's Office of Emergency Services, and the Gover Governor's Office requ requires a specific form, Form 130, authorizing specific city staff members to act as official agents of the city in matters pertaining to state disasters, and that has to be filed with the state. Form 130 will be in effect for three years upon adoption of the subject resolution and will cover future disasters within that time frame. Staff recommends approval of the subject resolution authorizing the city manager or public works director to seek reimbursement through the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services. That concludes my staff report and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Jesse. Any, any questions or comments from council? Okay. Nope. Any questions or comments from uh, the public? Seeing none, we'll close the public comments and call for a motion. Well, I'll make the motion then that the City Council approve Resolution 2019. Next in order, designating the City of Rancho Mirage, authorize agents for non-state agencies as required by the California Office of Emergency Services. Okay, second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. All right, we'll now move on to uh, item number 12, and this is going to be handled by Benjamin Torres. He's our associate planner, and as the subject is periodic review of development agreements. Good afternoon, Mayor and members of the City Council. Uh, the City's Municipal Code requires that uh, um, the periodic review of active development agreements to determine if the subject property owner or developer is performing in good faith with the terms and conditions of the respective uh, development agreements. There are currently five active development agreements which are currently subject to this review. They're currently listed on this table. The first one's Thomas Investments. We have the Weston Vacation Club, the Alamo Group, the Stone Bridge and the Polte Del Webb development agreements. But uh, please note that the Ferrari Carefield and the recently approved Rancho Mirage Country Club development, development agreements are not included in this review since their periodic review commences on the first anniversary of their effective date. 
Uh, the first development agreement that we'll discuss is the Thomas Investments Development Agreement for the Rancho Mirage self-storage facility that was approved in 1985. The 94,400 square foot facility was completed in two phases, in 1986 and 1989. The intent of the development agreement was to allow project phasing and to guarantee that no accessory commercial businesses would be operated from the storage spaces. The property is being properly maintained and is being operated in compliance with the terms of its development agreement and it is in good standing. Since there is no expiration date in the development agreement, uh, the development agreement will continue to run with the land. Uh, the second development agreement is the Weston Vacation Club Development Agreement that was approved in 1998 and in 2001 an operating memorandum was executed which modified portions of the development agreement. A special annual tax per vacation ownership week was established at $25 which has been adjusted annually based on the consumer price index and the current rate is $36.59 per week. The vacation ownership units were completed between 2001 and 2004. This development agreement is in good standing and since it does not have a defined expiration date or sunset clause, it will continue to run with the land. The next development agreement is the Alamo Group Development Agreement that was approved in 2005 and was subsequently amended in 2006 to allow office uses um, to exceed 25% of the site in exchange for payment of in lieu uh, fees to cover the loss of sales tax revenues as required by the municipal code since it was assumed that the upstairs tenant spaces would attract office uses rather than retail yeah. the project was completed in 2007 this development agreement is in good standing and will also continue to run with the land since it doesn't have a defined expiration date the stonebridge um, inc development agreement was approved in 2006 uh, for the development of 10 single family dwellings as of may 2019, three homes have been completed, three building permits have been issued for new construction, and two parcels have only planning entitlements for custom single family homes. Mm -hmm. This development agreement is in good standing and will also continue to run with the land. The last development agreement subject to this periodic review is the Polte Development Agreement, uh, which was approved in 2016 for the development of up to 1,200 residential dwelling units on approximately 320 acres. The purpose of uh, this agreement was to ensure the annexation of the project into the city and to provide the developer with the vested right to develop the age-restricted residential community. As of May 2019, a total of 172 homes have been completed and 54 are currently under construction. The term of uh, this agreement is 15 years and it is in good standing. Um, this item was presented to the Planning Commission on May 23rd, 2019, and at this time, the Planning Commission recommends the City Council uh, to find that the subject developers and or property owners are currently in compliance with the terms and conditions of their development agreements. This concludes staff's presentation, and staff is available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Benjamin. Any questions or comments from the Council? Seeing none, any comments or questions from the public? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment period and uh, call for a motion. All right, I'll make a motion that the City Council find that the subject developers and or property owners are currently in compliance with the terms and conditions of their development agreements. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, thank you so much. And now we are going to get here from our city attorney, Steve Quintanilla. Finally. Finally. <laughs> city Council is now going to recess hey, into hey, closed hey, session. You're getting paid for this time, kid. Hey. I know. You guys, that's why you should go really fast. But we reduce it when you say finally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The City Council is now going to recess in closed session pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9 regarding three potential initiation and litigation items. The council will also meet pursuant to government code section 54957 um, regarding the public employee performance evaluation of the city clerk. And finally, the council will meet pursuant to government code section 54957.6 to confer with this labor negotiator, Isaiah Hagerman, city manager, regarding the unrepresented employee known as the city clerk. 
Thank you so much, Steve. And uh, just as a last reminder, because of the July 4th holiday, uh, we will not be meeting, but our meeting will be put off till July 18th. So put it on your calendar. No meeting for July 4th, but a meeting on July 18th. We look forward to seeing you then, and we are now in adjournment. Thank you.